In Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. Oh, God. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's never kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No, I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. 1 800 5 800 866. Thank you for tuning in. Thanks for being part of our program. Here we are together again on the radio. This subject just won't go away. This subject uh, <laughs> just keeps coming back and bats us in the head. So many people have an opinion about it. I'm blown away. And of all places, here's a piece in U.S. News and World Report. Ladies, how many of you have read U.S. News and World Report? Don't all get up at once. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to imagine a chick reading U.S. News and World Report, whose name isn't Ann Coulter. <laughs> how many of you know who Ann Coulter is? Right. That's what I thought. All right. So this is, uh, maybe you've heard this name before, Bonnie Herbe. Bonnie Herbe for years was a, a radio news reporter. And you know how the chain of uh, command works in radio or the food chain? The way it works is if you're a hot young chick, you start off with a big TV job. As you age, you uh, drop down to the local independent station doing the news. Later, it's the all-news format when your face is too wrinkled to stick you on the tube. And uh, finally, you occasionally write a piece for 100 bucks for a national magazine. That's how this works. So Bonnie Bay has moved down now from the... Uh, Network radio news reporting. She's now writing pieces for U.S. News and World Report. And since none of you are likely to read U.S. News and World Report, I will read this to you. Like a bedtime story. You got a call there, Gary? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> you want to take that? This could be a fan mail from some flounder. What is that? <laughs> anyway. Tell Art what that was later on, that reference, please. Uh, here is the piece by Bonnie Herbe. They left the accent mark out of the second E in her name here, but that's fine. There it is. Will they ever stop, says Bonnie Herbe? The studies, I mean. Studies showing no matter how far women advance on the equity scale, we're still, as a gender, more domestic and less career-oriented than men. The latest version was released by the University of Michigan researchers late last week. Having a husband creates an extra seven hours of housework each week for women, according to a new study. For men, tying the knot saves an hour of weekly chores. Translation, once married, women are either forced to or choose to pick up the lion's share, not the lioness's share of housework. Here's an earlier version issued last summer by the Labor Department's Bureau of Labor Statistics. Quote, on an average day in 2006, 84% of women and 64% of men spent some time doing household activities such as housework, cooking, lawn care, or financial and other household management. Why are these findings so troublesome, says Bonnie Urbe. Is there a Mr. Urbe, by the way? That's what I thought. They're probably not troubling to the majority of men. And they may not even trouble some women. But to those of us who thought by now the lion and the lioness would have reached parity in the lair, the past few years have brought signs that a lot of women do not want these gender fault lines to disappear. 
Yes, things have improved since the days of Ozzy and Harriet. Kids, do you know who Ozzy and Harriet were? Yeah, didn't think so. Bonnie Herbe does, though. The U.S. News World Report has a reference to Ozzy and Harriet, so there you go. Even the Michigan researchers make note of that. Quote, overall, times are changing in the American home. In 1976, women busied themselves with 26 weekly hours of sweeping and dusting work. Compared with 17 hours in 2005. Well, that's true. Have you looked under the bed lately? You seen the dust mites? You see those things they call dust bunnies under your bed? Yeah. That's your girl doing less housework than, than your mom did. That's right. Says here, men are pitching in more. More than doubling their housework hours from 6 in 1976 to 13 in 2005. You pussies. But that does not erase the fact that there will always be women who want to be full-time homemakers with little or no desire to achieve outside the home. And that's fine. That's what choice is all about. The problem arises when career women are tagged by dubious employers and stereotyped as someone who, quote, is only working until she gets married or, quote, until she has a second child. Let's face it, that is what most women who go to work are with the exception of the occasional Bonnie or Bay. Generally speaking, women go to work until they meet Mr. Wright. Then they become Mrs. Wright. And then they stay home driving Mr. Wright's SUV. That's the bottom line. It says here, career-oriented men have somehow managed not to be similarly tagged. Hey, let me point out, most guys don't stop down their lives. They, they continue to show up at work day in and day out. We show up day in and day out, year after year after decade after decade until we're dead. We are chained to a desk until we're dead. That's why we haven't been similarly tagged, because everybody knows it. Men are at work having strokes and heart attacks and cancer. And and women are home uh, driving around to Starbucks and getting their nails done. If you don't believe me, go out to Starbucks tomorrow morning and see who's there. Please. It says here, not all men want to be CEOs. Not all men want to put in 80 hours per week to make partner. No. A lot of guys are like these guys who call my show. They put in 40 hours a week stocking wiper blades and spark plugs at the local auto parts store because they knocked up their girlfriend in high school. So, yes, they don't want to be CEO. They don't want to make partner because they could never do that. These guys could barely pay attention in community college, much less go to a real college and get a law degree or a doctorate. Or get a business degree, get a, a you know, a, one of these master's degrees or something. Forget it. An MBA, good luck. You hear these guys calling in all the time. Hey, Tom, I, you know, I smoked a lot of weed in high school, and my grades weren't so good, you know, so I went to Santa Monica College, and I studied, uh, you know, I studied economics there, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I work, uh, you know, I work in uh, Easy Lube, and it's a pretty good job, you know, if I keep uh, changing the oil there, I might be the head oil changer in a couple of years. That pays $12 an hour, which is 50% more than I'm making now. So, yes, they don't want to be CEOs or make partner, but that guy has to work until he's dead. He has to work until he's dead. He can't slow down his uh, business or slow down his uh, work hours because somebody had a baby. He has to keep showing up at the goddamn garage. Jesus Says here, yet the fact never redounds to the detriment of those, look it up, who do want to get to the top of the corporate or career ladder. The future for women, I believe, is not in seeking housework parity. I cannot tell you the times I've chastised female friends for doing too much housework or child care. The response is always the same. Quote, there's no way my husband would share equally in this there is a way, but many women seem disinclined to force the issue. Well, how would you do that, Bonnie? Stop putting out? Give me a break. 
says here the more domestic work women do, the less time they have for work outside the home. Well, ladies, nobody forces you to marry us. Does uh, Bonnie uh, deal with that possibility? Is the only option to marry a guy and then come down like a ton of brakes on him? If you want to get ahead in business, maybe you just don't get married. And then we won't be making all that extra housework for you. And then you won't have to argue with us about who does the dishes and who's going to iron the clothes and who's going to swab the toilets. I mean, by God, ladies, if it's that much trouble being married to us, I would just don't marry us. Stop telling us you want to get married. Stop pushing the issue. Seriously, just stop pushing it. And all of this is based on the idea that women are going to nag us and harass us mercilessly to our early deaths. We all die five years younger than women anyway, by on average. That's what it is, about five-year difference. So, uh, I mean, really, uh, you have other options, ladies. If if we are so inconvenient, if we are so intractable, if we are so uncooperative, don't ask us to marry you. Don't make us move into your place. Don't move into our place. Stay in your own goddamn place. Makes sense, right? Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. Tom, you are a god. You are my higher power, my friend. It's the Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. Saluting our newest competitor. It's a new FM station, K-White. K-W-I-T-E. K-White. Very exciting. Love to hear a new station on the air anytime uh, a new one comes on. They're playing the widest selection of white people of any radio station in America. In a market that's 47% Hispanic. All right. K White FM. It's very nice. 1 800 5800 Tom is, uh, by, by the way, and none of those annoying personalities either. Just one white guy after another. <laughs> one day the owners of the station will come visit Los Angeles. Who are all these Mexicans? You didn't tell me that before we bought the station. What is this? And we're playing Tom Petty twice an hour. <laughs> Nobody told me about this. K White. <laughs> <laughs> One eight hundred. Don't ask me where it is. I'm just making it up. Okay, just 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 pretend I made it up. It's like that station I heard in New York City. That was W H I T E, White <laughs> FM. <laughs> Another one. <laughs> you know, all you read are demographic surveys that there's more and more people of color that we're becoming a more pluralistic society, that there's more diversity than ever. You look at, you know, Barack Obama running for president and stuff like that. But there's still people out there who want to put all white formats on the air that's whiter than white stations. <laughs> I hear they have Clorox, though, as a major advertiser. It's very exciting. The best foods mayonnaise. It's great. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Yes, now Bonnie Bay of U.S. News and World Report is weighing in on the housework controversy. This is Ellen on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Yes. You're nuts. There are a lot of guys out there who do want to stay at home and do housework all the time and be full-time fathers no, and mothers no, there with aren't, their kids. No, there aren't that many. Just because your husband's a pussy doesn't mean the rest of us are. Hey, he is not a pussy. He helps out 
all the time, staying at home, cleaning the house, doing all the housework. By the way, taking care of two children. Really? How old? Yeah. How old? How old are your uh, little crumb crunchers? Uh, nine and thirteen. Nine and thirteen. Very nice. I see. So your husband essentially was a loser, and you were a career gal. And so it was a perfect, it was like a match made in heaven. He didn't want to go no, to work. No, as a matter of fact, I came out of a marriage of 20 years, met this beautiful man, asked him to stay at home, take care of my special needs children. That oh, and I their adopted, special needs, and too. Two special needs children. Really? And he did. Now, let me ask you this question. Uh, what uh, What was the fantabulous career that he had, that he gave up for your kids? He was a chef. <laughs> and we all know how employed chefs are. So essentially, he was sometimes employed and sometimes not. He still is working full-time, taking care of two children. Oh, and he's working full-time. Yeah, taking care of two kids. Really? Well, now he works where? The Black Angus? Where does he work? He works at home. Isn't that a job? He's a chef at home? No, he's working, taking care of you two children. You said he's children. working full-time. And full taking care time. of your kids. He's working full time taking care of your kids because there's no work for him as a chef. Wrong. Come on. Okay, Wait. let me ask you this, Tom. Was he the you chef? Let me ask you a question. Was he the chef? Work. Was he the work. chef? Was he the chef at Providence? He was a chef in Illinois. Oh, in Illinois. Yes. So you had to move him to Los Angeles. Did you meet him on the internet, darling? No, I met him. I asked him to have sex with me. <laughs> Yo, you were you were in Illinois at his restaurant. Yeah, and I asked him to sleep with me. I see. Who was taking care of your kids at that time? Husband, ex your, husband. Sorry, so you were married to somebody else with whom you married. You adopted these kids. You were on a business trip, which is what I warn the boys all the time about women who have careers. You're on the road and you banged a chef in uh, like Chicago or Evanston or somewhere like that. Yes. Yes, I right. did. And then uh, you said the sex was so good. Come back. I'll support you. Yes, exactly. Right. And uh, what uh, what level of restaurant was he a chef at? Italian restaurant. Italian. Oh, come on. There's eight billion Italian restaurants. Which one? Domino's? Which one? No. Osteria. Well, uh, come on. Osteria is the name of, of half of all Italian restaurants. Osteria. Well, that's what it was called. Now, well, that's like a Chinese restaurant called Chinese Restaurant, Osteria. Okay, Tom, the problem Osteria. is you don't believe that Osteria there are men Osteria Italiano. Out there who stay huh? <laughs> what? You don't believe that there are guys out there who have stayed at home. I believe, wrong. look, I believe there are guys who can fall out a 10 story window and live, okay? I do believe there are guys like that, just not a lot of them. Okay, well, this is one. And by the way, I, I can only imagine that his career was so unfulfilling. And the sex was so good, he just dropped everything. He, you, you're telling me that I don't have to slave over a hot stove for $12 an hour in Illinois anymore. I can move to L.A., and you'll pay all my expenses, and all I have to do is have sex with you and hang out with your kids all day? Sold. Yeah, the sex was right? that great. Now, that's essentially what happened then. Yeah, Sex was but fabulous. it isn't like it isn't like he gave up some fantastic career. Was he the was he the chef at the pump room? Was he the chef at uh, one of the top restaurants in Chicago? No, he was a chef at the uh, Osteria Italiano. Okay, it comes down to it: the sex was the best. Right. So you dumped your husband. You came back and said, "Honey, I, I I'm leaving you for the great sex." You told him that. Yeah. All right, so you told him you were going to leave him because you had great sex with a chef in Illinois. Yes. And, and then you told him, quit your job, come here, and I'll pay for everything. Yes. Right. Okay. So now you, you understand, dear, there's not a lot of guys like that. Most guys define themselves by what they do for a living and how much money they make. Watch your mouth. We're on the oh, air. Sorry. Sorry. Again, wait, please stop it. 
I mean, come on. So, so now the real truth comes out. You first, this conversation began with you telling us what a wonderful man he was, and he stays home with your special needs children. But then we find out the real truth. You were married to one guy, and on a business trip to Chicago, you banged another guy, and the sex was really good. So you came back to L.A., dumped your husband, moved this guy to L.A. The guy doesn't know L.A. from a hole in the wall, so he probably couldn't get a job as a chef here anyway. And so the compromise is he stays home and takes care of your two kids. But I get great sex. And you get great sex. So, see, the truth eventually came out here. Hang on a second. Ryan, what did you want to say to Ellen? It's karma for cheating on your husband. Then now you have two dummies running around? Are you serious? Yes. It's karma for cheating on your husband. Who in Illinois? What kind of guy are you going to find in Illinois? A chef who's now unemployed who can take care of your two special kids. Uh, come on. He makes me moan. I, I he makes he makes you moan. Right. That's that's fantastic. Are you kidding? That's it. Makes you moan and he makes you chupino. What does he cook? What kind of chef is he? Gourmet. Oh, gourmet, yes. A gourmet. <laughs> yes. That's like uh, gourmet cat food. That's the most overused word in the English language nowadays. Hey, hold, listen up, sweetheart. I hope I hope something terrible happens to you. I'm sorry. You want the truth or a lie? He puts dishes all over me. He puts dishes all over you? Right. You mean, well, you, are you talking please. about China or are you talking about, like, like food that he makes? Food that he makes, and then he puts it on me and eats it off of me. Is that so? Yeah. That's a very romantic story. And where are your special needs children while he's eating dinner off your uh, breasts? Ex-husband. <laughs> there we go. Now the truth comes out. Ryan, thank you. Uh, Kevin, what did you want to say to Ellen? Are, are you kidding me? This guy is so much of a pussy that he has his bitch wife call in and bitch for him? Is that, is hey, it's him? great sex. There's a lot of women out there who would take a guy I, for great sex. I hear him I hear in the background. Put him on if he's such a man. Fine, here. No, I'm not trying to talk to some whore. Hello. Yeah, all right, there you are. Are you kidding me? You're a, such a pussy, dude. Get a job and find the women that will do more things to you than this woman could do to you tonight. Really? You think that's better than putting great food all over a woman's body and eating it off? Yeah, dude, I don't know. She probably eats more than you can. Well, you should see this woman. I'd rather not. She sounds like an irritating bitch. She's a hot-looking blonde girl. Yeah, how old is she? She's 44. Oh, yeah, she's real hot. Oh, uh, way past you. Hey, Listen to Tom. Way past your sell-by date. Hey, I'm, 20, I'm, 20, hey, I'm 22, man. and I clean up with women my age that do more things than your 44-year-old whore. You know what? If you saw this woman, she's like a, a, a Victoria's Secret model. Yeah, a lot I of Victoria's Secret models, 44 years old. I put, years old. put it oh, all over her body, and then I get to eat it off her body. If you don't have a girl that you can eat food off of, that's your problem, bud. I, I could eat food off of five different women this week if I wanted to. Do you understand that? You have one 44-year-old ugly, aging whore. Tom, take care of old school. I'm done. There you go, Kevin. 1-800-5800-TOM. Uh, what is your name, pal? Are you still there? Yeah. What's your name? Oh, my name's Nick. Nick. Nick, the head chef at the Gigalosteria. This is Dave on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. you got to tell this guy that while his money-making wife is out on a business trip somewhere. She's probably banging some other chef at some other three- or two-star restaurant. She, he's got to wake up. Get the hell out. Move, get this bitch out of there. Dude, who's making better food than me? I'm a chef. I make the best food there is. I put it all over her body, and then I eat it. So you're, make, you're a chef making food at, oh, what, Dom? What do you make it? Rigatoni? Macaroni, come on, buddy, get with the picture. Wake up, get the hell out, 
I mean, what this your wife? Was I'm banging, imagining a 44 year old woman with a rigatoni spread all over her body. Was banging you over the counter. <laughs> She's gonna be banging some other guy the next time down the street. <laughs> Would you like some red pepper on that? Yes. Hey, I like pepper. Give me some mozzarella. <laughs> Nothing better. Uh, Dave, thank you so much. Uh, Tony, what did you want to say to Nick? Oh, God, I don't even know where to begin at this point. It's Wapapalooza at this point. Go ahead. I don't even know where to begin. I called because she sounds like she's smashed drunk. The whole time she's she's slurring, and I'm just now I'm picturing her doing shots off her chest, and he's licking marinara (laughs) sauce off her back. And I just want to get this image out of my head so bad. And then, while I'm listening to it, I can't stop thinking about how much that's not marinara. That's not marinara sauce. It's the end of the month. (laughs) Yeah, and is he even remotely concerned about the business trip she's now going on, or was that just a one-time thing? Because the sex was so good. Yes, it was so good. I don't even believe this guy. This sounds fake. There's just he's setting me up too much. There's just too much to bag in this guy with. It has to be fake. I don't believe him. Yeah, he's, t- he's t- withstanding too much punishment. I think is what you're saying, uh, Todd. What did you want to say here? I'm telling you right now, Dad. This guy's nuts are in a jar on the shelf. Yes, next to the grappa. Exactly. The, his wife has got him so snowed. You know what? I admit. I don't follow full like it's 101. I am a married man, but I got married late in life. But I'll tell you right now, my wife knows who's got who wears the pants in the family. It's as simple as that. Maybe it, you should put some food on your wife and then have sex with her. Put food on my wife? Let me tell you, dude, I was a professional chef for 15 years before I got out of the industry. You want to know why? Because if you don't know anybody and if you don't have, like, a million dollars to back yourself, you ain't going nowhere. Putting food on your wife, yeah, every once in a while, that's a nice little cute kinky thing for some chocolate sauce and some Ready Whip. But the bottom line is that you're not going to put, you know, a full four-course meal on your wife and eat it off her. That's just stupid. Simple as that, man. Your your balls are on a jar in the shelf next to the grappa, just like Tom said. <laughs> Simple as that, man. Follow like it's 101. Tell your wife what's up. You know, staying at home with the kids, while well, that's all well and good, you know what, man? They're not your kids. Why are you taking care of her kids? It's time to cut bait and go. You know what? You need to get out now and get yourself a decent lawyer before she nails you for a ton of child support payments for kids that don't even that genetically belong to you. Special well, usually, needs kids. Usually, hey, listen, usually it's like lasagna at the top, maybe a salad in the middle, and then ice cream at the bottom. What do you think about that? Oh, stop Tom, it. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> Tom Likas. Yes. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. It makes me sick to my stomach the way they worship you. It's ridiculous. It's like you're some sort of god or something, and you got your own little Bible going on. It's the Tom Likas Show. Southern California's FM Talk Station. 97.1 Free FM. John Lagos show coming to you from Hollywood, California. We're here at 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's the telephone number. And uh, it all started this hour with an article by one Bonnie Urbe, former radio news reporter who now writes for U.S. News and World Report. Continuing the whining about women doing uh, more housework than men. This is big story this week. Let's see, we got a war in Iraq. We got uh, uh, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton out to kill each other. And uh, we're we're talking about housework this week in U.S. News and World Report. (laughs) 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Renee on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm good. (laughs) Well, that's great. Hey, I'm calling. How come we didn't have the on-hold music for Tina Turner? Is that what you want on hold? Don't be careful what you wish for. <laughs> I know. 
Hey, I'm calling because last caller, the boy that called in to complain about the guy with the food, saying that women that are over 40 just look haggard and are old and stupid and ugly and whatever. Oh, I wouldn't say they're stupid, but uh, generally old. Generally. Declining appearance. I'm not. I'm one of those that has great genes. I had, you know, a high metabolism. I'm the same size I am now as I was when I was in high school. And I'm, I just look like a younger woman. What about the crow's feet? I act like it. Pardon? What about the crow's feet? I'm lucky I don't have those yet. My mom had really good skin. What so about the I'm... menopausal mustache? Do you have that? No, not yet. Not yet. Not well, you know. I will get it eventually, hopefully not, but not yet. A little Hitler mustache, very nice. And uh, what about that kind of? Do you have? Do you have uh, uh, some boobage? I mean, do you have that? I do. Those kind of wrinkly uh, cleaves at the top there. You know, when you've had a little no. too much sun. You know what I'm no. talking about. No, I use a lot of sunscreen. I use a lot of sunscreen. I do. I You've seen women that. like that, right? You know, you look like you just stick your mouth in there and go. Yeah, that's not me. I'm tight. Oh, really? I am tight. I see. And uh, what about uh, down south? You a little roast beef sandwich going on there? What do you got? No, I look good, Tom. I look young. I do look young. Well, you'll have to come down here. You'll have to come down here for the evaluation. I don't think yeah. anybody here believes you. <laughs> sure. On the phone, everybody's twenty three. No, I'm not 23. I'm more like 27. All right, 27. <laughs> but no, seriously, not every woman that's over the age of 40. All the women are nines and tens, yes. No, no, they're all nines and tens. But and I live in Orange County where a lot of the moms stay at home and they don't work. And a lot of them, they balloon out because they're at home and they're sitting on their ass. They're not out there. They're I'll not tell you what, if you, if you email me a photo, I'll put it on our MySpace page. Okay. And then we will post people's guesses as to what your age actually is. All right, I'll do that. What's the email address? I'll put you on with Dean. He's going to set that up. Okay. Are you near a computer? Can you do this? I can't do it right now. It has to be later. Uh, you don't have any pictures in your cell phone you could uh, send us? Not of me. I don't take pictures of myself. <laughs> well, uh, uh, when you're sending pictures to the guys you meet online, where do you get them from? I don't meet guys online. That's stupid. Oh, where do you meet them? Actually, I'm married, Tom. Yeah. Okay. I don't meet him anymore. You don't? don't anymore. Not not to meet, not to hook up. Oh, what do you meet him for? Our business. I see. Well, if you sent them a picture of yourself, you might do more business with them. No, I do business well enough without adding sexual innuendos. And if you got the cleavage without the wrinkling and stuff, uh, they might be impressed. I do. I have it all. All right. We'll believe it when yeah. we see it. All right, send me up with with Dean. All right, hold on. They're asking for it, you know. <laughs> oh yeah, I look. I don't look forty. Okay. I refer you back to uh, what was her name the other day? Renee, also AKA Tony. <laughs> yeah, she got so much response to her appearance on the program. She uh, reneged uh, as of being a friend. She's not our friend anymore on MySpace. She pulled it. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. Oh, it was Kelly, aka Tony. Five letters, same difference. Some chick name. Who cares? PJ on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey Tom, how's it going, man? It's going okay. First time, long time. Yeah. I must say it's a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, you must. <laughs> um. Here's the deal. You know, I, I read this article, what you're talking about, how women are complaining about having to do more housework once they get married and whatnot. And honestly, I think it's all BS. I've got the solution. I'm sorry? I've got the solution to chicks who complain that when they get married, they have to do more housework. Don't ask us to marry you. Yeah, exactly. It if will solve married, the problem. That there's two, two people to worry about now instead of just your, right. yourself. Right. So I say, if this is a problem for you, don't get married. Exactly. You know, I've I'm recently married. I know it's against all your rules and regulations and like 101 and whatnot. And you know, like you, I'm very much into the the Latina women. Yeah. I, uh, I'm myself a Middle Eastern. I married a Mexican woman, and I must tell you, Mexican women know how to treat their men. And you tell your family she's from the Middle East, right? No, no, no. Well, oh, she's that might be another one of your. Topics she I'm only looks Mexican. She's actually Persian. Uh, <laughs> yeah, she kind of looks Persian, so that might have been able to work for a while. <laughs> <laughs> 
Not anymore. Not anymore. I think my parents. She's just too Americanized. Doesn't speak Farsi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Only exactly. Spanish. <laughs> Once they come to the wedding, then they realize, hey, everybody on the other side of the ballroom, they don't look too Persian. <laughs> You know? Yes. It's it's nonsense. Women need to realize that there's there's a role here. You can't have both sides of the field here. You got to decide whether or not you want to be the housewife or you want to be the working wife. Oh boy. I'm sorry, Tom. We I had we had we had to believe that. I understand that. You know, and it's just it's BS, and uh, that's just what it is. Women need to go back to the way things were in the 40s and 50s, where they took care of their men. And didn't complain. If they want their marriages to last. And the world would be a much better place. Right. Everybody would be happy. And, you know, even you, I think, wouldn't be as cynical about marriage as you are right now if that was the case. Well, uh, again, uh, you know, put it this way. If I was living in South America where guys don't get raped in divorces and women uh, <laughs> meet your every need, uh, maybe exactly. I'd get married. But I don't. I live exactly. here where ball-busting bitches are the order of the day. Yeah, that that is true. That's unfortunately we're we're uh, swamped with that kind of women here in Southern California. Right, and uh, it's hard to find one like I got. I, I must say I'm a little I got a little bit lucky on this one, and you know I'm recently married, so who knows what's going to happen down the line. But for now, I'm pretty happy. Well, good luck to you, PJ. Thank you. Hey, Paul, can you take me up? Take me out old school. I certainly can. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That is our telephone number. Here comes Sam on the Tom Likas show. Hello. How are you doing, Professor? I'm doing great. Uh, as a previous caller, I am actually Middle Eastern. Also, I'm actually from Egypt. I was born and raised in California, so I'm a first generation Arab American. Yeah. And I've come to the realization we don't got that kind of problem. We don't have the high divorce rates. We don't got the uh, women complaining about working. Uh, most of our women are highly educated. I'm a mom, for example, has two degrees, speaks two different languages, my sister herself getting a degree, and they know the responsibilities. Their job is their home. That's what their job. And if they wish to have a career outside that, that's a hobby. If they wish to go and they want to work in the corporate world and they want to make feel independent or whatever the case may be, their job is from 8, you know, they can do that between 8 to 3, because by 3 o'clock they need to be there home and pick up the kids, make sure everything's set. Hey, any and, woman who wants to be independent, that's fine with me. But you know, uh, that I, means they should independently pay their own rent. Independently live in their own apartment, independently make their own car payments, independently buy their own groceries, independently pay their own utilities, independently buy their own clothes, independently have their own children, independently pay the expense of having their own children. And then I, I completely love an independent woman. I think it's fantastic. I'm the original feminist. I think independent women are the best. You know what? There's nothing that you've said that my father hasn't taught me since a, as a young child, or every male father has taught their son. When you go get married, there's something like a marriage agreement. And kind of tell the lays it out. What she gets in the case of divorce, what she doesn't get, what's her responsibilities, what's your responsibility. Pretty much like a prenuptial agreement. But it covers the whole marriage from A to Z. And they know it. And they ask, they, a, lot of, we, and a lot of Arab guys or the Middle Eastern community gets a lot of heat for the way we treat our women. But we don't have the divorce rates. We don't have the women, kids coming out all twisted. We don't have a whole bunch of, uh, uh, like you like to say, mechanic shop guys who are going to change my oil in the future. We don't got that. Yeah, we got the most, some of the hottest women out there in the world. Right. And so, and I'm pretty sure you've seen a few or experienced a few. I've uh, dated a few. Who, are, a few. who, by the way, were dating me secretly so people like you wouldn't know it. <laughs> oh, exactly. Because um, when they're driven off the showroom floor, they're supposed to have zero miles on them. <laughs> Pretty much, or uh, yeah. or reset to zero. Yeah, I think that's what they do. They go to the doctor and they reset to zero. That's what they do. They reset to zero, and because you know, it comes back as these women know that we we are very valued. You know, we don't treat our women like crap. You know, in fact, most Arabic women. You go to the Arabic house and you look at these Arabic women's homes. They drive the Benzes. They have the most beautiful homes. They have the most expensive jewelry. But they know the responsibility. I come home at three o'clock. The house is clean. The kids are doing their homework. There's a hot meal on my on my table, and she has my ba bath gone. That's the way it should be. And she's happy. Any she woman that doesn't like that, that, that be her. independent, have your career, live in your own place, have a party. Fantastic. Yeah. And she and she wanted to work. And I said, fine. You want to work, but you know, make sure that your your job is done. That's a hobby. You want to go and do a little bit of teaching on the side? That is your hobby. Like I go get to on the weekend to go play golf. 
you go and uh, teach on the, uh, on the side if you want, as long as your job at home is taken care of. And unlike American women, I'm sure she obeys your every command. And by the way, she was born and raised here in California. Uh-huh. And, but she comes from an Arabic background. Her mom taught her, you know, when her mom was in the kitchen cooking, she'll tell her, come here, daughter, you need to learn how to cook. You need to know how to take care of a house. My wife, who's actually 24 years old, knows how to sew. And by the way, my wife is highly educated. In fact, you know, I'm not going to toot my horn, but she has a ma- she has her master's in biomedicine. Look at that. Sam, I'm a jealous guy, i got to tell you. Thanks a lot for the call. The Tom Likas Show.